Hello everyone, and welcome to the 105th episode of Analyzing Evil, featuring Morton Joe from the Mad Max franchise, a despotic colonel who's created a dark empire for himself in a decimated world. Immortan Joe is one of the most grotesque villains to ever appear on the silver screen, a unique take on dictatorial power that strikes terror into all who view his demonic visage. In this video, we're going to comb through all that we're given about Immortan Joe in the film, as well as the comic book series that serves as a prequel to the film, examining how he rose to power, how he ordered his society, and the man himself to give you the full picture of this mad monstrosity's mind and his ascent to power. Now without further ado, Let's begin. Before the breaking of the world, Immortan Joe was an army colonel who had served in both the oil and water wars, a man who had been one of the precious few to stockpile weapons enough to see him through any post-apocalyptic scenario, forming his own biker gang and gathering the strong to him as he made his way through the hellscape that was now the world. Colonel Joe Moore amassed an army of fanatics that would allow him to slowly increase his power over the course of many years. This was not enough for a man like Colonel Joe though, as he was a man who not only had lived in the world before and known its glory, but one who held power and the will to use it to forge himself and those around him into something greater. And so with his amassed strength, Joe began to carve out an empire for himself across the desolate plains of Australia, becoming one of the most feared men in the new world. However, when one has an army at their disposal and wishes to create an empire, one needs the supplies to keep them healthy, and as his store of the most precious resource of all, water, grew dangerously low, Joe and his band of warriors happened upon a man who was aware of a large underground aquifer beneath a towering, nigh-impregnable citadel. And in exchange for his life, this man, known then as the Fat Man, led Colonel Joe to this fortress so he might take it as his own. Thus began the siege of the citadel, a long battle that saw Joe and his forces brought to the brink of extinction. Joe, in his cunning, and with his knowledge of the world before its breaking, took a lesson he had learned from the ancient tale of Tanaji Malasare, which describes his efforts to conquer a fortress much akin to the one Joe himself sought to bring to its knees by training a monitor lizard on birds and rats so he might coax the lizard up the walls with a rope that he could then use to scale the fortress with his men. Thus Joe endeavored to do the same, and succeeded, and three days after scaling the walls, when all seemed lost, Colonel Joe emerged from the fire and ruin of his host as a god of the wasteland, the Immortan, who would rule supreme over a new world built upon the ashes of the old for time eternal, so the myth claims. With greater power now at his disposal, Joe set to work consolidating his hold over the wasteland, forming a triumvirate with his faithful right hand, Kalishnikov, who ruled over the bullet farm and the fat man, rewarded for his intel with his installment as ruler of Gastown, where he would later become known as the People Eater. Forming a dark new society, Immortan Joe would become the object of his very own cult, instilling zealotry in all who would hearken to his voice that boomed from atop his cavernous citadel. And at the forefront of this cult were his war boys, young boys and men who had been shaped into living skeletons, clad in brands and tattoos that showed their allegiance to their dread leader. Buying the lie that they, through their servitude to the Immortan Joe in war and brutality, would ascend to Valhalla and ride alongside him in battle for all eternity. In his efforts to keep his society prosperous, Immortan Joe went about ordering various degrees of infrastructure to be constructed and maintained, like his vegetable farms, his human milk farms that were lovingly made up of women known as milkers, his advent of blood bags, humans used as living transfusion vessels to sustain the health of his populace, as well as strict rations of his aqua cola that would ensure the longevity of his rule. And in the chaos of the world he inhabited, Joe, no matter how brutal his methods and how twisted the society, managed to maintain a hold on power that brought a semblance of stability and peace to the populace under his rule. But Immortan Joe, contrary to popular belief, was not in fact immortal, but a man just like any other. One whose body at the time of this story was beginning to fail after years of abuse and life in a harsh climate. Stocky, riddled with pustules, and possessing failing lungs, the grotesque and imposing presence that was Immortan Joe was little more than a mask with which he projected his power. And now Immortan Joe's mind was pointed toward the birthing and rearing of a suitable heir to take his place upon his demise to preserve his legacy. In this endeavor, he procured for himself a revolving door of five wives, women who were kept in a vault with filtered air, clean water, and books to keep them from going insane. Women that were meant to produce Joe healthy children, who would ensure that his divinity upon the wasteland would remain eternal. 
so Joe would visit and abuse these women on a nearly daily basis, forcing them to refer to him as daddy, just like his war boys, who more than a few characters assumed he was also abusing in the same manner as his five wives. And in his repeated visits to the vault, Joe made sure he was given the best possible odds for producing his coveted heir. No matter how unlikely that might have been, considering how irrevocably damaged all life had been due to the war's past. However, Joe made a grave error in educating these women. For with an education comes the desire for something greater. And desire they did. And when Furiosa came to guard them and gave them knowledge of the Green Place, they conspired with her to free themselves and escape to a land beyond the reach of men like Immortan Joe. And so with Furiosa and the wives' escape began the War of the Road. And during the course of his mad dash, Joe shows himself to be quite concerned with the well-being of his wives. Not just because of their use to him as childbearers, but because he seems to actually care for them on a deeply perverted level. As we can see, when he puts his life in danger to swerve out of Ankarad's way once she's fallen from the war rig and then laments her passing by screaming with her body cradled in his arms. Try as he might, with all the strength at his disposal, Immortan Joe could not outdo those who sought to free themselves from his yoke, and in appropriately brutal fashion, his life was ended by the woman that he once thought to be his most valuable plaything and warrior. And at this end, who was Immortan Joe? He was a man who held within his grasp absolute power in the world that he created. Crafting a dictatorship and cult of personality from the ashes of a broken world, Colonel Joe Moore would become the Immortan Joe the brutal ruler of a shattered world who built upon the barbarity of those that inhabited it to transform his populace into a bevy of demons subject to his will. Rather than using his power to bring about much needed change in the world, Immortan Joe chose to install himself as a god who answered to no one, a man more concerned with preserving his own power and legacy than the health and well-being of those under his care. If the world were ever to enter into such a dire state, and the very fabric of our society was torn to shreds and left to rot in the wake of the primal side of humanity, I have no doubt that fiefdoms, akin to the one Immortan Joe created, would sprout up all across the planet. For unfortunately, this film is a reminder that when times are tough and the world is brought to its knees, it is the strong who survive, and through their strength, they often take what they will and ascend to despotism simply because they can. Brutal, sadistic, and megalomaniacal, Immortan Joe sought to create a new world that would live on far past his death, in the process causing the death and suffering of who knows how many people, innocent or otherwise. And if Immortan Joe had lived to see his dark ambitions bear their fruit, no matter how prosperous his empire might have been, it was always one destined to be enveloped in the shadow of depravity and evil. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Analyzing Evil, and I hope you've enjoyed. What are your thoughts on Immortan Joe? Did I miss anything? Let me know down below, and leave a suggestion for a villain you'd like to see featured while you're at it. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. A big thank you to all of my subscribers, and to my patrons, and a most vile thank you to those whose names you're seeing on screen now. Join the channel's Discord server and Reddit to interact with myself and the community, and follow me on the social media platforms listed below to keep up with the channel. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you soon.